Awesome. This is so exciting. I see some names on the attendee list that I know. This is great. And some, some new ones. All right. And if you're not um, interpreting today, please make sure you are muted. All right. So, okay. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, let me get my notes up. Welcome, everyone, uh, and thank you so much for joining us for um, this next installment of the City of San Jose Business Development Webinar Series. My name is Nathan Donato Weinstein, and I work for the San Jose Office of Economic Development and Cultural Affairs. Our goal is to help businesses thrive in San Jose and if you ever want to reach us, you can call us at the number on your screen or send us an email. Adolfo, can you move on to the next slide? Thank you. Um, today's session is available via live interpretation in Spanish, Vietnamese, and Mandarin. I'll give you just a minute to select the language channel of your choice using the interpretation icon uh, via the globe symbol on your tool menu. It should be down there on the bottom of your screen. As you likely noted upon entry to today's session, this webinar is being recorded and will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. You can scan the QR code with your phone's camera um, to take you directly to our site. And we usually have them up by the following Monday. Adolfo, next slide, please. All right. Um, before we get started, I have a few important items to note. Um, first is that while we make every effort um, in good faith to present an accurate and up-to-date information, uh, we always remind you to consult with a financial or legal advisor on critical issues as we cannot um, accept liability for any misinterpreted information. Um, Adolfo, next slide. Um, there will be an opportunity at the end of this presentation for a Q&A discussion. And so please enter your questions in the chat um, as we go along today to ensure we get your question and we can provide a response. A post-webinar survey will also be sent to you via email from Zoom today, and we'd love to receive your feedback so that we can improve our programs. Um, finally, we are doing um, business development webinars every other week, so be sure to register for what's upcoming. And Adolfo, next slide. So before we get um, to today's program, on the next slide is an upcoming program that may be of interest to you if you rent or are thinking of renting a commercial space for your business. So on August 31st, join us for a free workshop on how to negotiate with your commercial landlord. Um, you will learn key terms that will help you in your negotiation and strategies for getting the best deal. Uh, this program is produced by Start Small, Think Big with support from the Latino Business Foundation, Small Business Majority, and of course, the city of San Jose. We'd love to see you there. Next slide, please. Um, I just have two announcements before I introduce our guest speaker today, Fletcher. First, while today's program is being interpreted into Spanish, Vietnamese, and Mandarin, the city's procurement process uh, is conducted entirely in English. Um, no matter what your preferred language is, we hope this information provided today is helpful in exploring doing business with the city. Um, second, uh, we will be receiving a broad overview 
uh, today on the city's solicitation process and contracting opportunities from our purchasing department. Construction projects are solicited and managed by the city's public works department. If you are a construction contractor, you can find more information about doing business with the city through our Construction Academy webpage, which is available on the city's website. And the QR code on the screen right now will take you there. But you will still learn many useful things from today's presentation with purchasing. So I hope you'll stick around. Next slide. And, um, and so here's what we're all here for. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce you to Fletcher Barnes. Fletcher serves as the program manager for the Tactical Procurement Group at the City of San Jose, overseeing procurements for a variety of goods and services. Fletcher joined the city in 2019 after roles in enterprise resource planning, business analysis, and operations. Fletcher has a bachelor's degree in economics from the University of California, San Diego, and he grew up in San Jose and calls the Bay Area home. In his free time, he loves exploring local restaurants and taking in the great outdoors, especially Alum Rock Park. Um, and with that, I'm going to hand things over to Fletcher. Thank you so much for being here. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Nathan. Much appreciated for the introduction. Let me go ahead and share. Awesome. So thanks, everyone, for being here today. Um, I'm really excited to be able to you know, share a little bit about we, what we do in purchasing um, and specifically uh, offer some tips on how you can do business with the city of San Jose. Um, as a reminder, I'm Fletcher Barnes. Um, I'm a program manager in the purchasing division. And with that, we'll go ahead and get started. So just a brief overview on what uh, purchasing does. Um, we're, the city's purchasing division is responsible for the procurement of goods and non-consulting services um, in a variety of different areas. So some of the services that we procure uh, on behalf of the city are janitorial, maintenance, landscaping, information technology, um, plumbing, electrical, painting, um, um, pretty much anything you can think of um, outside of construction and consulting um, comes through our group. Um, and that also includes products such as vehicles, automotive parts, audiovisual equipment, um, office supplies, uh, transportation, um, a huge, huge variety of different things. Um, so it's exciting. We get to really interact with a lot of uh, uh, local businesses and, and really understand, um, you know, a lot of different aspects of uh, what's out there and, and what San Jose um, has to offer. So um, the next question would be, um, right, how can, how can you get involved? Um, what, what bid opportunities does the city have? Um, how do you participate in those bidding opportunities and how do you do business with the city? Um, so the bidding opportunities um, that we have are, are posted on BiddingGo, which is the city's internet-based e-procurement system. Um, there's no cost to register for, receive, and respond to city solicitation. Um, and additional information on the city's purchasing process and bidding opportunities uh, can be found on the purchasing website on the city internet page. Um, so real quick, I'm going to go ahead and hop over there just to give an, a brief overview on, on what's there um, and kind of share what, uh, what we have out. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So if you were to click that link, um, you would be brought to this page. Uh, purchasing is under the city's finance department. Um, and we have a lot of different resources and um, information here that, that provides a good overview of what we do. Um, so what I'm covering today, uh, if uh, you want a refresher, or you just want to dive into um, something very similar, we have a pamphlet that's a guide to doing business with the city. 
Um, it gives a lot of tips and tricks and information about the, um, the processes that we have here in terms of uh, procurement. Um, we also have information on vendor registration um, and then some key points about things that are required in solicitation. Um, there's insurance requirements in some cases. Um, the city is also uh, has a policy for environmentally preferable procurement. Um, we have a local and small business preference, um, which I'll dive into uh, more in depth in a little bit. Um, and then we have some other items here as well, um, noting frequently asked questions, um, contact information, um, items along those lines. So this is a great resource to really get kicked off um, if you're if you're trying to to jump in into the city's uh, procurement process. Great. Um, so with that, I'm going to hop over to Bid and Go um, and dive into how you would register as a vendor um, to get involved. Back. So um, this right here is the, the city's portal. Um, and I'll, I'll note the link on a, on a future page in the presentation. Um, but this is the, the landing page for all um, different uh, procurements that the city does. So it includes everything in purchasing. It includes everything in consulting, and it includes everything in public works. Um, so to get started, what you would do is you'd, you'd want to click this button here um, to begin your registration if you haven't already as a vendor. And upon clicking that page, what you'll be brought to first is a list of um, what we call commodity codes. So these commodity codes um, are broken out as a way for you to select uh, what different products and or services um, that you provide and that you'd be interested in um, when the city goes out to uh, bid for those products or services. So as an example, um, let's say I am a vendor who um, provides aircraft parts and services. Um, so I would click that commodity code. Um, and just for the purposes of this demo, we'll say that's, that's all I do. Um, but there's a huge list here of all different kinds of things um, that you can include if you're interested in hearing about those different types of solicitation. Go ahead and hit continue application. Um, and then we'll just, for as an example, um, do test to um, see about the process. Oops. Do a quick fix there. Um, and then you would sign up and do go through the process of uh, entering your password. Great, and then this, this is key right here. So this is where you're entering your vendor information. It's very important that um, you enter your company name and you provide um, the correct contact information, especially throughout the bidding process. This is how you would interact with the city. Um, and this is the, the information we'd be looking for if we had to reach out to you for some reason throughout the bidding process. Um, we would be looking at what is what you signed up with in terms of your info. Um, the fields here that are marked in red are mandatory. Um, it's primarily just um, information, name, phone numbers, um, those kinds of things. And then down here, there's some optional fields. So these aren't mandatory. Um, as far as requirements for different licenses, um, and, and other items there and disadvantaged business enterprises. Um, for purchasing, if we had any specifics, this would be included in the bid itself. Um, so during the registration process, these fields are not mandatory and you're not um, required to fill those out. It may be different for public works. Um, I would advise you to refer to um, the information Nathan shared previously about their construction academy if you have any questions or concerns about the uh, public works process. So at that point, you go to save and go to verification. And assuming everything's correct, you've verified all your information, um, you would go through and submit the registration form and there you go. Um, that would be registration completed. Um, and then from this point onward, whenever the city posts uh, bids for the commodity coach that you registered, um, there is a notice that gets sent out um, to keep you in the loop of uh, what different kinds of products and services we're procuring um, that align with that info. Great. Awesome. I'll go ahead and hop back to the presentation. All right. 
Um, so just a refresher of what we cover. Um, to receive bid notifications and participate in the bidding process, um, you must register with BiddingGo. Um, that is the, the one-stop shop um, for everything coming through the city um, for different procurements. Um, and really ensure that your profiles are accurate, complete, and up-to-date. Um, if you have a change in contact info um, or you want to select additional commodities because you you know you realize there's other aspects of business that you're involved in, um, we encourage you to do that as soon as possible once you're registered um, to, to keep everything consistent and up-to-date. Um, and then if you have any questions regarding the Bidding Go e-procurement system, um, registration process, technical challenges, if, um, anything that comes up. Um, this info is also listed on the city's landing page um, noted above, but you can also contact Bid and Go through their phone number or via email, um, and they're happy to help you um, with uh, any challenges that may come up throughout the process. So with that, I'm gonna dive in a little bit more about um, what do we procure? You know, what kind of solicitations does the city um, go out for? Um, so for purchasing, we have three types of solicitation. The first one is the request for quote. Um, this is an informal solicitation with an estimated value of $103,000 or below. And the basis for award, uh, which is key here, is it's either based on lowest price or best value. So depending on um, what is being procured, if it's um, services, um, and the department has uh, maybe specific criteria they're looking for, or if it can be something that's done just based on price, um, that would be stated in the bid document. So a best value procurement um, is evaluated on a variety of different factors. Some of those could be, um, you know, your project plan, um, what kind of information is submitted with the bid in terms of technical capabilities, if it was for software, um, cost is still a factor, um, but it's not the only deciding factor in uh, a best value procurement. Um, on the other hand, lowest price um, would be awarded uh, to the vendor that meets is responsive and responsible um, and has the lowest total base bid based on the criteria listed in that, that bid. Um, so jumping down, we have the request for bid, um, also known as an RFB. This is a formal solicitation um, as it's a higher value. Um, and these are put out when there's an estimated value of greater than $130,000. And RFBs are only based on price. So um, if you see an RFB, it's a price determinative bid. Um, and that would be, um, the award would be based on the lowest total base bid um, at the end of that solicitation for the responsive and responsible vendor. Um, there's also the request for proposal, um, which is uh, a formal solicitation, but a best value form of solicitation. So um, similar to the cutoff with the RFB, but an RFP is, um, is not based on price, it's based on a number of factors. Um, and then those, uh, uh, we have an evaluation team that scores the bid. Um, and then those, uh, the vendor that has the highest overall score, um, at the end of the, the process um, is usually uh, notified of the award. So um, like I stated previously, there's a number of factors that uh, affect the points. Um, there's also that local small business preference plays into it, um, a number of things, and I'll, I'll hop to that coming up. Cool. Oh, I should actually have one more note there too. Um, we do have, it's not listed here, but the city occasionally goes out for RFIs. Um, which is a request for information. Um, the reason those aren't listed here is they're not actually, it's not a solicitation. We're not purchasing anything through that, um, but it's when the city is looking for additional information on something. Um, and um, that's, that's in the case of we put out an RFI. So we usually would have a questionnaire. Um, we may be asking about um, a product that the city is curious about or, um, you know, um, what options there are, are out there for certain kinds of services. Um, it's really to just gather information about what's out in the market, um, but it's not uh, effectively a solicitation. We're not looking to purchase anything through an RFI. Great, so um, talking about preferences, um, the local and small business preference um, is, it's included in the city's municipal code and it allocates a preference for local and small business enterprises. 
Um, for the purpose of abbreviation, I'm going to, a local business enterprise will be an LBE and a small business enterprise will be an SBE. Um, so this is included in all of the city's bids, except when there are funding and or grant requirements that prohibit the preference of this application. Um, so in certain cases, um, we go out for procurements where we have grant funds um, that may be federal um, or state or, or some other through some other process. Um, and oftentimes they have certain requirements um, where we're not able to apply that preference. So that determination is made when the solicitation is built out, um, but just a note there about the LBESB preference. Um, and with that, vendors are required to first qualify as a local business enterprise before they can be considered as a small business enterprise. Um, and, and the preferences are determined based on the procurement type. So referring to what we spoke about um, a little bit ago, in evaluative procurements, 5% of the total points are set aside for that LBE preference, and another 5% are set aside for that um, SBE preference. For lowest price, um, it's a little bit different. Um, the LBE preference is 2.5% and the SB preference is 2.5%. And that's applied as a credit to the total base bid um, for that preference. Great. So with that, I'll do a quick, a little bit of a deeper dive into the city's uh, local and small business enterprise preference, um, just to provide some more information there. Great. Forgive me, I know this is, um, this is an example of form. It's a lot of text, um, don't, don't worry too much. Um, most of it is covered on that slide, but just as a refresher, this, this is included with the city's bid um, if they're, um, and would be used if you were selecting or wanted to apply for the LBESB preference. Um, so um, it's noting some of the things we talked about previously, 4.12 in the municipal code, um, and then giving some clarity on the percentages and those items. The key thing to note here is qualifying for the LBE preference. Um, there's two key items that are required, um, and that is a valid San Jose business tax certificate number. Um, those uh, are required um, and should match the address and business name for which the preference is being claimed, and they need to be current of, as of the solicitation due date. Um, we do have uh, the availability for you to verify that online. Um, so the link there, um, you can click in and search your business name, and that would give you information as to if the city has a record on file of, you know, what the business tax certificate is and the validity. Um, we encourage you to do that prior to submittal. Fletcher, no, I, yeah. I, have, I have a question or, and, and maybe a comment. Sure. One is the definition of sort of what is a small business is very specific, right? Yeah. What is that mean? What does small mean for this? So yeah, so small business for the purpose of this um, means that the uh, you have to qualify for the LBE preference up front. Right. But um, the number of employees for your firm, regardless of where they are located, needs to be 35 or fewer. Um, so that's the key for the small business. Um, and the city would uh, you would fill out this form. We would look at what you what's been filed with your business tax certificate. And you would also verify within this document of uh, you know, your employee count um, and those items. Um, and the other thing is that number, 35 or fewer, needs to kind of be 35 or fewer on your business tax registration, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, you need to have the business tax registration before or at the time you submit your bid. If you don't have it and afterward, you know, you, you want to get it to qualify, it's too late, right? Yes, correct. Um, so as of the, um, the solicitation due date, that business tax certificate would need to be current. Um, so generally our solicitations are posted for a number of weeks. Um, it varies depending on the complexity and, uh, you know, questions that are asked. Um, but a, a rough estimate for that would be a solicitation is active for about a month. Right. Um, there. There's Great a whole question. bunch of reasons why you should have a business tax registration. This is just one reason. So anyway, thank you, Fletcher. I'll be quiet now. No, awesome. I, I appreciate the question, Nathan. Thank you. Um, so yeah, that, that pretty much went right into the next portion of this. 
Um, but that's that's the gist of the, the local business enterprise and the small business enterprise preference. Um, it's it's part of a bid. It's, it's noted there as you know up to ten percent for evaluative, up to five percent for price determinative. Um, but um, regardless of if you you know would qualify or not for this preference, um, we still encourage all vendors to to apply you know when they feel um, able to city solicitation. Great. So back to the uh, presentation. Okay. So next topic: um, city business tax certificates. Um, so I'm going to go a little bit into requirements of, you know, what we look for and what's required um, with city solicitation. So um, all vendors are required to comply with the city's municipal code um, with respect to the payment of uh, any applicable business tax prior to conducting business with the city. Um, there's additional information about the business tax and registration process that can be found on the city's website. Um, they also include um, at this link. Um, contact information. If you have any questions, um, the business tax office is very happy to assist um, and provide guidance and information um, when requested. Um, so that's, um, it's, it's a municipal code requirement. That's also a requirement for all of our uh, solicitations that vendors uh, adhere by the city's business tax policy. Um, another item that we look for is California Secretary of State registration. Um, so this is a, another key item that's required for um, all of purchasing solicitations. Um, we do verify this at the time of bid close for all the vendors that have submitted bids, um, but all vendors are required to have that valid registration with the California Secretary of State um, prior to conducting business uh, with the city. Um, some additional information can be found on the state's website. Unfortunately, since this is uh, a state item, we're unable to uh, advise on um, Secretary of State specific items, but the best uh, resource for that would be that website listed there. Um, and they have FAQs um, and other information and points of contact should you have any questions about that process. Um, another key point with bidding is insurance requirements. So all vendors performing services for the city are required to submit proof of commercial insurance when specified. Um, the magnitude of insurance varies. Um, there's different, you know, if there's someone performing um, electrical services that would likely have a different insurance requirement than the city purchasing um, uh, a product. Um, so there's, there's all kinds of variances there. Um, the key thing to note is whatever those requirements may be, the specific requirements are included with the solicitation. So we have a clear document that notes what those requirements are. Um, we do have a Q&A period during the solicitation process. Should there be any questions about insurance, about business tax, about um, bid requirements, anything in general, um, we, we have a period open for vendors to ask us those questions. Um, and we're, we're happy to answer and provide guidance where we can. Um, a note about commercial insurance is the requirements are subject to determination by the city's risk manager. So like I said, they're, they're not um, uh, consistent across the board. It varies depending on the specifics of what is being procured. Um, and the question we get a lot is, you know, why do I need commercial insurance? Um, if I'm doing providing a service for the city. Um, well, one, it, it provides financial protection to you in the case of um, uh, not the best case scenario happening. Um, and it also provides pr financial protection to the city. Um, and it is a bid requirement. So all vendors are required to adhere by whatever the insurance requirements may be in order to submit a valid bid. Um, so we encourage vendors to build the cost of that insurance um, into their bid pricing um, when they submit that. Um, and into the cost of doing business. Um, another item to note uh, for services, uh, there are wage requirements um, and those vary depending on the specifics of what those services are. Um, should there be any wage requirements uh, required, we include documentation stating um, um, with instructions, um, noting what those wages are, how they would apply, um, all that information would be included with the solicitation itself. Um, and there's, there's two wage categories to note. There's prevailing wage, um, which is um, set in coordination with the State Department of Industrial, Industrial Relations. And then there's the living wage, which is um, um, set by the city of San Jose. And that um, 
is done uh, based on, uh, in coordination with the Office of Equality Assurance. Um, so they, the Office of Equality Assurance uh, monitors all of the city's contracts and purchase orders um, that are subject to wage requirements. Um, and if you have questions, I'll, I'll go ahead and hop here just as a quick note. Um, but they have um, some great resources online to know more information about those wage requirements. Uh, great. Um, so th this is the link that was shown on that page. Um, they've got some great info about prevailing or living wage. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about this until uh, depending on the solicitation, if there are requirements, it will be included with the bid. Um, and you're welcome during the Q&A period to ask any questions or share any concerns or anything that may happen um, during that process. All right. Quick. Apologies. Uh, um, just a note, um, it was briefly mentioned, the city does have an environmentally preferable procurement policy um, to encourage the procurement of products and services that minimize environmental impact. Um, if you're curious about the extent of that policy, um, there's, there's a decent amount of documentation on the website um, noting about um, why it was enacted and, and what that policy contains. Um, we also include it with our bids um, uh, across the board. Um, and just, just a general note about, you know, procurement at the city, we're, um, we're really here to serve the best interests of the residents of the city of San Jose, and, um, you know, we really enjoy what we do, but with all of this, we strive to maintain the highest ethical standards and purchasing practices um, to ensure that our vendor selection process is transparent, competitive, um, and all parties are treated fairly. Um, and just a key note there. Great. Um, so with that, I'm going to do one more quick demo um, to kind of sh share what um, what you could see in Bid and Go, um, what kind of bids you can look at, um, and and what's available on that end. Great. Um, so we're back here. <laughs> May look familiar um, based on the registration process, but going to this portal. Um, you have the ability to actually see um, even active bids that are going on right now within the city. So um, as you can see here, we have, you can tab by what kind of bids you're looking for, um, if it's consulting, purchasing, or public works. Um, and you can also look at historical bids. If you're curious what the city has done in the past, um, you're able to pull those up and see what the results were, um, what, um, what the city requested, what the pricing was even for the vendor to, um, uh, one of those bids was price determinat determinative. Um, so there's a lot of great resources here just if you're interested in um, kind of seeing what's out there and what the city goes out to bid for. Um, if I were to dive into a specific one here, um, I can say, for instance, the city is looking for roofing services. Um, so we have, this is a, an overview, it provides basic information. Um, and then we have some more information here about due dates, Q&A, um, um, what commodity codes, scope of services. What, Fletcher, yeah. what, is that mean, what does that mean, Q&A board? Oh, sorry, yeah, um, great question. So Q&A board is questions and answers. Um, so what the Q&A question and answer board is used for um, is you're able to um, ask questions of the city um, on anything in the bid, um, and we'll do our best to provide an answer to that. Um, Sometimes we get questions about specifics on what what the what the city's asking for, um, you know, clarifications on what what the scope of the services are, um, questions about the products we're buying, um, questions about certain requirements, whether it be insurance um, or other items like that. Um, so that's a great resource if you have questions during the bidding process is to use that board, um, and you can also see other questions that vendors ask. Um, as well. So it, it's publicly posted. Um, you're able to see for a specific bid um, all the different vendors who have posed questions for that bid. Great. Thanks for the question, Nathan. That was a, a good call out. Um, and yeah, that's that's pretty much the gist of it um, in terms of what's here in the, the bidding portal.
All right. So um, just some closing notes. Um, the, the purpose of this presentation was really to serve in a, as an overview of the city solicitation process. Um, and it's, it may have seemed like a decent amount of requirements, but it's not an exhaustive list. Um, some bids may not have all those requirements. Um, some may have additional. Um, and also there's changes in, in city policy um, and, and different uh, things that shift over time. So um, my hope is this can kind of serve as a good baseline and overview for what the process entails. Um, and then um, uh, please refer to the specific solicitation documents for a complete up-to-date list of requirements. Um, that's really the best source is to look at the specific bid that you're interested in once you've registered um, to gather what the city is really looking for. Um, and, and just a final note, we really encourage vendors to read all solicitation documents carefully um, and submit questions during the bidding process. Um, we're here for you. Um, and we want to, um, you know, do the best we can to um, procure services for the city um, in a fair and competitive way. So um, with that, I'd like to thank everyone so much for attending today. Um, I hope it was, uh, was useful um, and um, I'm really, really happy to be here and, and share some information with everyone. So thank you. I'll go ahead and hand it back over to, to Nathan um, for the next topic. Awesome. Fletcher, thank you so much um, for that. That was a lot of information. It was really, really good stuff. Um, so I wanted to let the audience know that we, we seem to be having a little bit of an issue with the chat function, uh, but we do see we have some raised hands here. So, and I, I see Anna. Anna has had her hand raised for <laughs> like a long time. Cameron is on my team. Cameron, are, are you? you able to call on Anna right now or are we having some technical difficulties? I'm able to call on individual people to talk. Awesome, Anna. Great. Can you please call on Anna? And, and Anna, thank you so much for your patience. <laughs> you need to make sure you unmute yourself if you're ready to, to speak. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, I have a simple question. I just want to ask whether we can have this PowerPoint slides. <laughs> so yeah, that's the question that I have at the beginning. Yeah, sure. Um, Nathan, I'll, I'll let you answer that. We're... Yeah, of course, Fletcher, they're your slides and we are well, we will would love to send them out to you, Anna. Okay. We All have right. your Thank registration. You. If you registered today, and yes. obviously you did. So we'll, we'll send those out. Okay. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Th thank you. <laughs> thanks for thanks for your question. So we also had um, so a chat from, or excuse me, a hand raised from um, Numbia. Go ahead and. Take okay. Yes. Off thank you. you. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank you. Thank you for the um, notice to come to the meeting. I would. I didn't know you guys had a slab. Well, I'm sorry, Alameda County slab, but. Um, local business enterprise and you went past it. So I seen it said, I seen the, the black, you know, the demonstration, but is that also the same application to apply to be a local enterprise business as well? Yeah, so I can, I think I can jump in on that, Nathan. Um, so the way the city does it is we unfortunately don't um, at this time keep it like an overall record. It's done on a per bid uh, process. Oh. So for each bid, you would have to fill that form out and just say, you know, your business tax uh, certificate info, um, you'd sign and provide the information requested. Um, but we do have that. It's just um, done on a per bid basis. Um, yeah, I've never seen it. Okay, okay, no yeah. problem. So that's fine. And the other question, if you don't mind, how does one, um, I'm in the services. So do you do much with services? I meant like health and wellness, like um, employee wellness, or like, um, do you have this with that? I, I know you guys have like the HSA, you know, with as employees. So that's been the hardest thing since I've been here for seven years as far as getting on the wellness side and the medical side of it. We don't seem to get too much attention, even though it's a need. <laughs> yeah, so um, we, we, we have procured similar services in the past. Um, it, it varies depending on department needs. So the way procurements typically work is a departmental 
have um, funds appropriated or grant funding or something along those lines, and they'll come to us and work with us to go out for a procurement. Um, so we're um, the best way to stay up to date with that is if you have a vendor, uh, you register as a vendor and didn't go and select a commodity code, um, there should be one that lines up fairly close to um, health and wellness services. Um, and then when the city posts um, a solicitation for that, you would receive a notification saying, you know, the city's going out to bid for health and wellness uh, or, or whatever the specific services would be. Um, and that, that'd be the best way to stay up to date. Okay, and the last question, the Bendigo. Um, is there a subscription? I know it used to be BidSync and BidSync had a lot of problems and, and it was mm -hmm. trying to take money. So is, this seems to be a better a better outlet than um, BidSync. So is there a subscription? Because BidSync used to try to charge us money and everything. Yeah, um, great question. Um, so no, there isn't. It, it's free to use. It's free to register. Okay. Um, the important thing is, um, it, and I think this is, Nathan mentioned being this, this is being recorded. Um, but within the slide deck, there's that link for um, the City of San Jose portal. If you okay. go through there, you should not run into any issues with in terms of payment. Um, Bidingo does have the option for that for different things. But as long as you go through the city's page, um, you should be fine. And it's there is no cost. It is completely free. Um, if you have any issues, um, Bidingo is able to help you with that process too and, and provide guidance. Okay, last question. It's still business. The SBA, mm -hmm. um, not the SBA, the, the um, I'm registered with the Department of General Services. So is that also a qualification, you know, for the, the is this part of like supplier diversity or um, does that make a difference if you, you know, minority owned, you know, disadvantaged, you know, all those, the acronyms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, another, another good question. Um, so that okay. depends. We don't, um, it depends on the specific requirements of the solicitation. So by default, um, the city just has that local small business preference. Okay. Um, but there are certain, right, where we have a federal grant um, or other things that come up where they have other stipulations. Um, so sometimes um, DBE may be involved. Um, it really depends on the specifics of, of what, what our funding source is and what we're going out to procure. Um, but um, as a general, the city doesn't, doesn't include that in our standard solicitation. Um, okay, cool. thank you. All right, I'm sorry, well, what the, the businesses, the sharks is in, anything to do with, it, with that, is that something totally separate or do they work with the city? The, the, <laughs> the San Jose the, the, sharks, is that, is that part of the, is that part of San, city of San Jose or is that a totally different thing if I, if, if I was going for employee wellness? Um, that's, that's a different thing. Um, okay. Us, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, okay. <laughs> it'd be neat if we were involved with hockey, but um, yeah, unfortunately, that's, I wish that's we owned it. the Sharks. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. So, thank you. Cool. You asked thank all my you. questions. Thank you. Thank you yeah, for, 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 for being so, here. It's uh, great, to, great to have you. I think one thing that's interesting, Fletcher, is to, to think about that commodity code list and to think really expansively about what mm -hmm. might apply to my business so that I can be sure to kind of capture anything even remotely kind of that might touch upon my services right I think that's that's a yeah. good thing to, to do yeah I that's a great a great call out Nathan I, I I'd say that's a key point you want to be as inclusive as possible when selecting commodity codes um and we even there even is a commodity code for miscellaneous <laughs> so uh -huh. um if there's, you know, general, it doesn't appear to be listed, that's a great one to select too. Um, it doesn't hurt to cast a wider net, right? I see we have a question from Luis. And while we bring Luis on, if you have a, a question, please raise your hand. We're only doing audio questions today. Oh. And next up will be Mike. So Luis, what's uh, up? Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Yes, I have a question. Uh, once we register on the, on the, uh, the City of San Jose website, how long does it take for us to, uh, for the business to be approved? Um, it should be instantaneous. Um, so once you have that, uh, that registration, sorry, it should be automatic. Um, once that registration is complete, um, you should receive an email verification confirming your registration. And at that point, you're, you're good to go. Um, if you have any issues with that, we have points of contact listed on the website um, and they're able to assist should anything come up. Okay, well, thank you very much. One more question. Yeah.
Luis, was that it? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mike, let's bring Mike up. I have a question um, uh, regarding to the contracting. Uh, is there is a like a one-time purchase type things that do uh, like a micro purchases where you don't have to go through the contracting if you register? Yeah, so um, that's a good question, Mike. Um, so we do have based on our, our municipal city code um, that there are thresholds where we don't go through a competitive process. So for small purchases that are um, under $10,000, um, the city is able to, to not go through a competitive process to um, purchase those items, given certain stipulations and um, caveats there. Um, but um, in that case, you wouldn't uh, necessarily have to be registered with Bid and Go, um, but um, the the city still requires the SOS registration um, for California Secretary of State, um, business tax, um, um, and then um, potential insurance requirements. Um, so um, that's a note there um, in terms of the the smaller purchases um, that may not go through the competitive process, um, but the the general requirements would still apply. So in that case, um, if you wanted to reach out with somebody that uh, capacity of what we do, is there is a way to be contacted with someone or is um, how that will work? Um, just in terms of like what services and, and right. products you well, offer? The, the services that we offer as my company, um, is there is a way for, you know, especially introducing ourselves saying that we, we would like to go with the micro purchasing less than 10,000. And these are the services we offer. Is there some way we can contact them at that way or no? Um, I'm trying to think in terms of, not sure on, on our end, we don't have like a database or, or um, things along those lines for the, the micro purchases. Um, a lot of times it's, it's done by departments just based on need. Um, in terms of solicitation, seeing what the city's going for, the registration and bid and go is the best process. Um, I'm not sure, Nathan, if you know anything else about small business. I think I understand, I think I understand Mike's question, um, kind of understanding what the city's, it's hard, right? Because what are the city's needs? And um, there's like so many and um, for something like, what you're describing a, a micro purchase um sort of it's a chicken and egg kind of issue is how do you, how do how does the city know what you have to offer and you know um but uh so so yeah I, I don't i don't know that i have a good answer for you mike um i'm sorry about that okay thank you but it's a good it's a good question and we'll think think about it um Thank you. I think Anna may have another question. Anna, are you back or do you just have your hand still raised? Sorry, actually, I, I, I just lower my hand. I don't have another question. Oh, okay. It's fine. No problem. All right. Well, this is if your last chance. If anybody has another question for Fletcher, um, we'll take a moment and pause for you to find that raised hand button at the bottom of your screen or your phone. Um, okay, going once, going twice. Oh, guess what? <laughs> that was it. I, we did it. We have a question from Kim. Kim, are you there? Hi, guys. Thanks for... Uh... Thanks for being on this call and give us the presentation. Uh, I have a question. Usually, what is the net um, as far as you know? We got the water contracts. You know, what was the the net days that we get paid, or um, or into like the oh. service deliver? Does that make sense? Yeah, I I think I I can chime in on this one, yeah. Nathan. Um, okay. Yeah. So it's the city standard uh, terms are net thirty. Um, so um, for contract and purchase orders, um, it varies depending on what the specifics of the procurement, um, but either of those are our payment terms are um, generally net 30. Um, as far as 
the like award of a bid to actually issuing a purchase order or you know a, completing a contract um, there's there's a lot of variables um, sometimes we need to uh, uh, achieve council approval which can lengthen the timeline on that um, but the the payment terms would be net 30. Um, and Fletcher so that means that the full the full kind of invoice would be paid within 30 days right yes um yes <laughs> that's okay. that's the terms of the purchase order in the agreement um it's um it's up to departments in terms of actually completing that process but that's what's baked into um, our purchase orders and our contracts uh, in that case right uh, i just have one last question uh as far as tangible products does it matter where it came from like uh, just in terms of the in terms of you know like say we have a manufacturer in india uh, and mm -hmm. you know we will have to ship the products over uh, here yeah um would, would there be any restrictions or any sort of obligations in terms of manufacturing um so generally no um it depends once again on the specific we have had um certain bids where we have like grant funding um, and there are requirements with that grant that, you know, a product is um, uh, fulfills certain requirements, say in the case of a, um, a procurement for um, a certain type of electronic or, or something like that. Um, but other than that, we generally don't have stipulations on where things are manufactured. Um, it's more so on what the, the product can do or what the functionality is of that product. Um, but the best point to, to look at is the bid requirements. Um, those would be key. Um, and if something's unclear, or it's, it's not sure that Q&A period is an awesome resource to, to chime in and inquire about um, uh, specific questions about that, that bit. Great, thank you so much, Fletchers and Nathan, Elizabeth. I hope to uh, connect with you guys on LinkedIn, keeping that connections. Okay, thank you. Thank yeah, you so thanks. much, Kim. All right, I think that just about does it for us. So, um, I'd love to uh, just to thank everybody for being here today. And um, Fletcher, you were great. And um, be sure to be on the lookout for more webinars as part of um, part of our series, including August 31st. Um, thank you so much, everyone. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Yay.